Hello everyone, I'm Kino. Two, three. Hello everyone, I'm Kino, and I'll be discussing the fundamentals of medical mycology. So this is my outline. Um, so we'll be basically discussing the characteristics of fungi, the, the structures, the reproduction, the diagnosis, and then we'll be identifying some fungi. So what are the basic characteristics of fungi? So fungi are aerobic, meaning they need air, they need oxygen to survive. They're also nucleated, meaning they have a true nucleus, which makes them eukaryotic. They're a chlorophyllous, meaning wala silang chlorophyll. This is, wala silang chlorophyll even though some fungi may have um, a green color to them. So yun, wala silang chlorophyll. Um, they also reproduce sexually and or asexually, usually via spores. They're heterotrophic, meaning they derive their nutrients from their environment. They're also slow growing compared to bacteria, they're immobile. And they are encased in a rigid cell wall made up of chitin and glucan. Another important feature of the fungal cell is that their cell membrane is mainly composed of ergosterol, which is important because it's a target of antifungal drugs, such as azoles and, al and allylamines. So yeah, they target and they block ergosterol synthesis. Um, other types of antifungal drugs include polyene antifungals, which disrupt their cell permeability, as well as echinocandins, which um, target cell wall synthesis. It's important to note that some antifungal drugs may also harm human tissues. Moving on, let's discuss the nutrition of fungi. So again, they are heterotrophs, so they need their environment for nutrients. So they can be classified as saprotrophs, which derive nutrients from decaying matter. Um, such as Basidiobolus and Cladosporium, which are etiologic agents of subcutaneous mycoses. They can also be parasitic that feed on living organisms, such as der dermatophytes, which are the etiologic agents of tinea. Again, they need substrates as the source of their nutrition. And they do this by secreting enzymes for digestion, and then they absorb nutrients from the substrate. Now let's talk about basic fungal structures. As will be discussed later, um, fungi can be can exist as yeasts or molds. Now yeasts are independent single cells that are produced by budding or fission, and they produce blastoconidia, which may elongate to form pseudohyphae. On the agar plate, they look round, pasty, or mucoid. For me, they look like bacterial colonies. In naman, sa molds, they're made up of hyphae. They're chains of tubular filament-like cells, so multicellular sila, that elongate by apical extension, or yung Spitzen corpora. On the agar plate, they are filament filamentous, hairy, woolly, wispy. So, ito yung nakikita natin sa tinapay pag may, um, pag may amag na sila. So basically, yun na, yun na rin yun. That's mold. So let's talk about hyphae. Hyphae ulit. They are only found in molds. So there are two types of hyphae, the septate or the aseptate or cenocytic. So basically, ang septate, they're like walls. Ang palatandaan ko dyan ay, they look like bamboo. So yan, yung mga ganyan. That's, this is what you call septated dahil mukha siyang bamboo. May walls siya. So ayun, in a septate, hyphae, septa are perforated which allows the exchange of cytoplasmic material and sometimes even nuclei. On the other hand here, wala tayong nakikitang parang bamboo, so wala ring walls. So, aseptate, no septa, and sinocytic. Now let's talk about the mycelium. Uh, basically, yung mycelium is a congregation of hyphae that can be categorized according to function and according to location. So according to location muna tayo, and let's use this feature dish as our reference. So vegetative mycelia, yun na sa ilalim ng substrate, everything that grows under the agar, that's vegetative mycelia. Meanwhile, yung aerial mycelia, yun, yun yung nakikita natin above the agar. Ito yung mga wispy, um, wispy colonies. Now let's um, classify them according to function. The vegetative hyphae can be on the surface of the substrate or submerged under the substrate that function as 
that function for digestion, absorption, and distribution of nutrients. Yung sa pinakailalim, there. Well, pad, pad na sa surface. Um, yung nasa pinakataas naman, ang um, reproductive hyphae that produce sporangiospores or asexual spores. Speaking of spores, let's talk about their life cycle. So, they scatter, they embed into a substrate, such as yung sa petri dish, yung sa agar, and then they germinate and extend, and then they produce hyphae, which uh, grow to produce mycelia, which will then house the spores, and then marry releasing spores, and sa scatter sila. And the cycle will repeat. Now, regarding spores, they can either be formed in a sac or in sporangia, as seen here in rhizopus. So, dito kasi nag-rupture nag na yung sac, pero dito naman yung outline na they were once contained in a sac. As compared to yung nasa kanan, sa aspergillus natin, wala kang, walang sac that contained them. So, they're basically naked spores. Now, let's talk about fungal dimorphism. As mentioned earlier, Fungi can exist as yeasts or molds. Basically, in dimorphism is the way of the fungus to survive, to adapt to the host environment, and improve their pathogenic ability. So, the most important thing to remember here is that there are molds in the cold and yeasts in the beast. So, ano ibig sabihin yan? Mold siya outside the human body where it's colder. You know, inside the body, they're, they, they become yeasts. This is a temperature-sensitive process with a cutoff at usually 37 degrees Celsius. So, ayan. Um, these four species here, they are, they are very important kasi una, dimorphic sila. Tapos, they're also etiologic agents of endemic mycoses. Um, important sila because they function as primary pathogens that can affect immunocompetent patients. So, let's recall that um, to be uh, infected by a fungal disease, dapat you, a patient presents with an immunocompromised status. Well, as the in the case of these four, um, na endemic mycoses and dimorphic rin, they function as primary pathogens that affect even those who are immunocompetent. Now let's talk about fungal reproduction. So, there are three basic modes of fungal reproduction. We have, as mentioned earlier, yung spore production. It's their primary mode of reproduction. We can also have the budding or the outward hyphal growth. Madaming fungi na propagate uh, using this method. And you have fragmentation. So, uh, a demonstration of fragmentation is if you have an isolate sa petri dish. Um, if you have a fungal isolate sa petri dish and you scrape off yung mycelium nila, and transfer it to a new fresh petri dish, mag-grow pa rin yung um, fungi dun sa petri dish na bago, kahit a portion na of the original colony yung lumipat natin. So yun, fragmentation yun. So fungal reproduction can be asexual or sexual. So these two are f basically phases nila. So in the asexual phase, that's it's a product of mitosis of a single parent cell, Asexual, a anamorph, asexual spores. They produce asexual spores, such as sporangiospores and conidia. On the other hand, sexual, the sexual phase is due to the fusion of two parental nuclei followed by meiosis. Dito naman, heliomorph ang tawag sa kanila. It's the phase that produces sexual spores. The sexual spores include zygospore, ascospore, Ascospore and Basidiospore. You may have noticed that there are um, these two species here. Actually, they are one and the same. Ang difference lang nila ay yung face nila. So, in the asexual phase, histoplasma capsulata man tawag. In the sexual phase naman, ay halomyces capsulata man tawag. According to MAM, yung main basis ng fungal classification ay sexual. Pero actually, in the labs, in practice, mas common and mas tama, I refer to them is there anamorph de designation? Kasi yun, yun yung nakikita natin sa lab. So, okay, moving on to asexual reproduction. As mentioned earlier, you have two, two types of asexual spores, the sporangiospores and the conidia. Basically, as mentioned earlier, yung sporangiospores, they form, they are asexual spores that, pr that are produced inside a sac called a sporangium, which lies on a stalk 
called the sporangial four. So again, sporangial spore, the spores nila. Tapos inside a sac called sporangium that lays on a stalk called sporangial four. So ayun, um, an example of this is mucorales. Um, yung rhizopus and mucor. Yung asexual spores, yung sporangial spores, are formed by successive cleavages within the sac called the sporangium. Again, which lies on a stalk called sporangia spore. Okay, now, conidia naman, they're free spores. So basically, they're naked. Wala silang sac compared to this a while ago. They also have stalks called phyalides for phyalospores, and they're conid conidia genus. So, an ex our uh, species that have conidia are aspergillus, penicillium, and dermatophytes. This is aspergillus. So, th these conidia develop by either one, pinching off the tip of a special fertile hypha, or two, segmentation of pre existing vegetative hypha. So, mas common talaga ang conidia. As you can see, mas madaming, mas madaming examples. <laughs> and, uh, therefore, mas common sila. Okay, let's look at the structure of the conidia naman. So there are basically four types of conidia fours. So the first is monoverticillate, simple no branch, and basically derecho sa, sa phyalide. Ayan. Phyalide, phyalospore. So ayan. Um, that's monoverticillate. Second is biverticulata, symmetrical. So dito naman, there's a one stage branching with maculae. So, ayun, mag branch siya. That's the first branch. Ang tawag dito sa light blue, maculae. So, branch, maculae, um, phyalite, and then phyalospore. The third is biverticulate asymmetrical. So, this is the conidia 4. mag branch siya. Ang tawag dito sa dark blue ay ramus. mag branch yung ramus into the maculae. Which will brand, which will then lead to the phyal phyalide, which will lead to the phyalospore. And the last classification is quarter verticillate, three stage branch branching. So ito yung start siya dito, mag branch siya dito, and it will form, it will branch into the ramus, and then matula olet. So basically, three stages siya dito. So let's talk about the types of conidia naman. There are five types of conidia. So, una is the arthrospore. Basically, ang nakikita ko dito parang finger natin na made up of joints. Yun. Next is chlamydospore. Um, mukha siyang um, sphere, spherical, budding out of a thickening of a hyphal cell. So, yun. Chlamydospore, sphere. And blastospore naman. Ito. Blastospore, budding parent cell, mukha siyang bilog. So, blastospore, bud, bilog. So, yun. <laughs> bilog, as compared to dito na part pa rin siya ng um, hyphae, dito, individual from a bud na siya. Or a conidium. Next, we have the phyalospore. Minimension natin kanina. Basically, phyalospore, mukha siyang, ito siya, it will arise from a, from a phyal, it will arise from a vase-shaped structure called the phyalide or sterigma. Ito siya. Mukha siyang vase. Pag minagnify pa natin, magmukha siyang vase. Ah, vase. So, ayun. Sa ganito, mas bata. Younger spores at the bottom, at the base, compared to yung nasa taas. And then we have, last but not least, the microconidia and macroconidia. Basically, yung macroconidia, sila yung mukhang croissant. Malalaki. <laughs> um, composed of two or more cells. Tapos yung microconidia naman, sila yung hindi croissant. Yung maliliit. <laughs> so again, croissant, yung malalaki. Macroconidia, composed of two or more cells. Yung nalang yung microconidia, yung maliliit, single cell lang sila. These are actually formed by the same fungus under varying conditions. So, dito sa specimen na to, most probably from the same fungus sila, from the same specimen, from the same sample. Okay, let's now talk about sexual spores. Again, there are three types of sexual spores, as, as mentioned earlier. They're formed by the fusion of two different strains. So they form diploid nuclei. And after meiosis and mitosis, they produce haploid spores. 
Okay, let's now talk about zygospores. They are sturdy diploid spores that, for, that form when hyphae of two opposite strains fuse that create a diploid zygote. Ang notable dito sa zygospore is their spiny appearance on both light microscopy and electron microscopy. So, kitang kita yung mga spines nila. So, the pattern of spore formation ng zygospore, so, when you disrupt yung cell wall, tapos, um, if the cell wall is disrupted and the conditions are met, so, perform ng mycelium, which will then develop into a sporangium. Tapos, dun sa sporangium, as mentioned earlier, dun mag-divide yung cells um, that are haploid in nature. Tapos, those haploid, uh, those haploid nuclei will then be sporangiospores. And next, you have the ascospores. They're multicellular spores created inside an ascos. So, they're from two different strains or sexes that join together to produce dicaryons or diploid nuclei with diploid nuclei. So, um, it will start with di di dicaryon formation that will enlarge to form an ascos or yung sac niya, the specialized sac here or the fruiting body, which will then undergo meiosis that form four or eight haploid nuclei and then ascospores. So again, yung um, important feature dito yung ascocarp that contain the ASCII, which contain the ascospores. So, yung, as, yung ascocarp dito, yung fruiting body. Last but not least is the basidiospore. It's a haploid spore formed on the outside of a basidium. So, basidiospore, basidium. Mukha siyang, dito sa electron microscope, mukha siyang budding. Pero ang description dito ay club or base or bat shape. So, ayan, basidiospore, haploid, basidium. So, magbabala siya sa basidium. Um, it's formed when two mating types fuse, and it has a similar pattern of spore formation as the ascospore. But then, um, here, dicaryon, basidium, mag-undergo ng meiosis. Pero dito, four, in this na four or eight. Tapos, it will be um, basidiocarp instead of ascocarp. And then, they will be extruded. So, yun, ang important dito, may extrude sila as spores. Now let's talk about the diagnostics of my mycosis. So there are three uh, main methods of um, diagnosis. So first is direct microscopy. It's the simplest, it's the most rapid. It determines the significance and um, determines further needs of the patient. And it identifies kung Ano yung hindi dapat nandoon. Pero ang caveat nito, it cannot fully identify fungi. Kasi based lang siya sa morphological features eh. So advantage yun nga. Cheap, kayang kaya gawin. Um, dahil widely available ang equipment. And it's used, it's useful pag paired siya with a culture. And disadvantage naman, insensitive. Um, onti lang ang ma-examine mo. Tapos, hindi mo siya fully may examine without the culture and most especially it requires training to identify what you're looking at. So ayun, ang um, most common na direct microscopy um, ay ang potassium hydroxide sphere, KOH smear. It visualizes fungal elements in skin scrapings, nails, and hair clippings. Basically yung mga madaming keratin. Ang rationale dito is because KOH dissolves keratin Pero it spares and preserves the chitin on fungal cell walls. So procedure dito, you're going to sterilize the area with ethanol, let it air dry. You're going to scrape the skin surface, usually with a scalpel. And you're going to place those scales that you've collected on a slide. You're going to drop one to three drops of KOH. You're going to leave it for an hour. And then you're going to view it under the microscope. So these are two types of diseases that can be diagnosed by a KOH smear. So, ang common misconception dito sa tinea corporis and PTRS is versicolor at is that ito na yung name nung um, etiologic agent nila. It's, it's a very common misconception, pero um, these are actually the names of the diseases mismo. So, let's start with tinea corporis or buni. Um, this is one of the many tinea infections, yung aka ringworm infections. Um, it's a cutaneous mycosis involving the keratinized layers of the skin. To collect samples here, kukuha ka from the periphery of the lesion where the active fungus is found dito. 
it's it presents similar to eczema na may itchy red lesions ka so if we have patients that um we suspect of eczema kailangan na rin natin it would be prudent to um to ask for a KOH smear para lang ma rule out natin ang tinyo corpus so ayun We'll see the pigmented hyphae and the dermatophytes later upon uh, microscopy. Dito muna tayo sa pityriasis versicolor and an. It's a superficial mycosis. So yung pinaka-pinaka superficial layer lang or stratum corneum ang affected. You get the specimens um, by scraping the skin with a blunt end of a scalpel or using scotch tape to collect samples. Um, difference ito, walang inflammation and walang itchiness. Tapos, um, as we will see later, spaghetti and meatballs configuration siya, and it's caused by malasisia furfur. So, ang tinia corporis, it's caused by dermatophytes, most usually, and then pityriasis versicolor or an an, is caused by malasisia furfur. So, again, this is a uh, um, bigger image. So, ayun, tawa siya ringworm kasi um, it looks like a worm. Yun yung kwento sa amin noon. Pero ayun, again, this is caused by um, dermatophytes. You know, this is caused by um, malasisia for fur. So yun, under the microscope, kita natin yung dermatophytes are, um, dermatophytes have this ar arthrospore formation, so parang joints siya. That's um, characteristic of Dermatophytes. It's also pigmented. Meanwhile, sa pityriasis versicolor and an, um, you have the spaghetti and meatballs conf uh, conformation, meaning um, yung yeast cells niya, ito, yung meatballs, tapos yung hyphae niya, yung spaghetti. Kaya siya tinatawag spaghetti and meatballs. So, yun, ito meatball, ito spaghetti. Now, the KOH smear is indicated pag may red scaly rashes ka as seen earlier as well as rashes that don't respond to topical steroids, as well as tinea infections, nail infections, or hair loss na may scaly hair loss. Materials needed, rubbing alcohol wipes, scalpel, toothbrush, or cotton swab, a nail clipper for nail infections, glass slides, cover slips, KOH. Iba yung percentage ng KOH na ginagamit ideally sa skin sample, so it's 10%, and nail specimens, 20%, dahil mas madaming keratin sa nails. Uh, so uh, you also need a stain, a uh, slant, and a microscope. So, ayun, to collect specimens, the skin scales, the border of the lesion, sa nails, sa ilalim ng nail plate, the scalp, uh, you're going to remove broken pieces of hair from the scalp, pati yung mga um, tumutuklap na pieces. Now, another um, method of the, another method of direct microscopy is using India ink specifically for encapsulated organisms such as Cryptococcus. Dito, ang sabi nila ay CF, um, CSF sample to, tas they uh, stained, it, stained it with India ink. Ang kakaiba sa India ink is that it's a negative staining. Negative in a sense na imbis na yung organism of interest ang sinestain, yung background yung sinestain niya. Kaya siya negative. So, ayun, it will form a clear halo around the yeast cell. That clear halo is the cryptococcal capsule. So, ayun, again, for cryptococcus, cryptococcal meningitis, India ink ang ginagamit. Now, let's move on to the second mode of um, diagnosis, which is histopathology. Basically, para lang siya yung sa patho. Patho natin is in which um, pathologic tissue are used and examined. So, advantage niya, mas sensitive siya. And it's one of the criteria na nagpo-prove na may fungal disease nga yung patient natin. Disadvantage naman, as with any pathologic, histopathologic slide, matagal talaga siya i-prepare. And it requires specialist training and specialist equipment rin. As well, uh, isa pang disadvantage is mahirap i-obtain yung tissue, lalo na if um, invasive ang procedure. So, ayun. Um, you, can, you can view... Um, mycosis or my, um, fungal infections, even using even when using routine stains such as H&E and PAS, pero may special stains talaga that focus on fungal diseases such as GMS, Musicarmine, and Fontana Mason. However, you cannot identify the, fun the fungi here. 
dapat ma-pair siya with culture and direct microscopy. Ang makikita mo lang dito, basically, are fungal elements. It's really hard to um, identify using these specimens. So, ayun, routine stains such as H and E. Kita mo naman na may um, parang hyphal elements, di ba? Um, dito rin around the blood vessel. It's yung periodic acid shift, yung pass, it's, it detects glycogen and stains fungal, wall, fungal cells, cell walls pink. So, ito siya. Makita mo siya as pink structures. Um, let's move on to the fungal specific stains naman, yung GMS, uh, yung Gamari methanamine stain. It um, dyes yung, um, it stains, sorry, it stains fungal cells black against the blue-green background. Ayun. Yung si Carmine, on the other hand, detects mucin, and it stains the inner cell of Cryptococcus red. Fontana Mason, on the other hand, stains melanin. Ang example ng um, dito ay cryptococcus pa rin. So the last but not the least, I, I personally think it's one of the most important ay ang culture kasi it's vital in the identification of fungi kasi dito natin madedevelop yung treatment plan natin to, to check if there's an outbreak. Ang important dito rin is to check for antifungal susceptibility if, gum, if gagana ba ang gamot natin. Tapos, this will also check the significance of the infection. So, ayun, as mentioned before, its advantages include proper fungal identification, susceptibility testing, and any clinical sample can be used in a culture. And again, it's a requirement to prove na fungal disease siya. This advantage, slow process talaga siya kasi as mentioned earlier, slow growing ang fungi. You need experience and training uh, to both culture and uh, identify. Um, it's insensitive and ang problem dito kasi um, madaming possible contaminants na makuha and yeah they can coexist kasi dun sa petri dish eh. so ayun it's one of one caveat of culture so ayun when culturing fungi usually you have two um two preferred two of the most preferred um uh, media media so we have SDA, Sabarad's dextrose agar. Dito, it's, um, it allows fungal growth for all species. It's the most common agar used. Tapos, acidic siya and mataas yung sugar niya. So it's selective for all types of fungi, pati yung saprophytic fungi. The mycobiotic agar, on the other hand, has cyclohexamide and chloramphenicol. Cyclohexamide inhibits saprobic fungi um, and chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol inhibits bacterial growth. So sure ka na fungi dyan and hindi sila sa probic. It's more selective ito. Now let's try to identify some fungi. So identification methods include ma macroscopic. So you're going to check the shape, form, color, pigmentation, and number of colonies. Microscopic naman, you're going to look at them under the microscope. This specimen uh, specifically was stained on uh, with... Uh, with lactophenol cotton blue to visualize the conidia capsule and hyphae and the biochemical tests to differentiate fungi. And this is also used for yeasts. Let's uh, review a little the dermatophytes natin. As mentioned earlier, they cause cutaneous mycoses that infect keratinous layers of skin, hair, and nails. So there are generally three genera that cause or yung ringworm infections, the trichophyton, microsporum, and epidermophyton, with an additional four genera here. So yung um, of utmost importance, siguro, um, and what was mentioned in the lecture was pinya capitis or yung sa scalp, pinya corporis sa body, pinya manum sa kamay, pinya ungium sa nails, pinya furis sa um, pubic area and thighs, so jock itch, and tinya pedis sa uh, feet. So let's uh, compare the three common uh, dermatophytes. So they're usually under the microscope. Ang tinitingnan sa kanila ay ang macroconidia and microconidia. Again, macroconidia yung croissant looking uh, structures, and microconidia yung mga maliliit. So yun, sa epidermal phyton, um, walang microconidia. Pero, clustered ang macroconidia. Sa microsperum, on the other hand, 
rare ang biker conidia, pero madami and rough walled and malaki ang macro conidia. Trichophyton, on the other hand, rare naman ngayon sa kanya yung macro conidia, and madami abundant ang micro conidia. A good mnemonic for this is EMT. With EMT, there's increasing micro conidia. So, from epidermophyton, na walang micro conidia na magkakaroon ng rare microconidia sa microsperm and sa trichophyton na madaming microconidia. So let's start with trichophyton. Trichophyton rubrum is characterized here with sparse macroconidia on di lang. Dito I think rarely seen siya. More on microconidia ng dito, yung pear or tear shaped. Tapos on agar, it's downy white sa upside niya. Pero sa blood sa reverse pigment niya, blood wine red. Kaya siya rubrum. Rubrum, red, blood wine, reverse pigment. So, yun. Anthropophilic. So, humans talaga ang host nito. Kaya it's a common cause of the tinea infections. Next ay trichophyton erinaceae. So, dito, absent or wala talagang macroconidia and madaming madaming microconidia. Again, yung upside niya sa agar ay downy white colonies. Pero in reverse naman niya ay unique bright lemon yellowish pigment. Zoophilic itong uh, species na to, ang natural host niya ay hedgehog. So if a uh, patient comes in and we isolate this fungus sa kanya, most probably they got it from their pet hedgehog. So yun. Last but not least, sa trichophyton ay trichophyton mentagrophytes. So ang special dito ay grapes on a vine. So yung grapes niya, um, spherical microconidia here, tapos yung vine niya ay yung hyphae niya. Tapos, may, you'll notice rin ito, pero di siya croissant shape dito, pero these are their macroconidia. So, ayun. Uh, this is what it looks like on the agar plate. So, ayun. This is the summary of the trichophyton species. So, madaling i-identify yung mentagrophytes dahil nga sa presence of the grapes on a vine as well as the macroconidia. Pero these two, they're very difficult to um, identify lalo na if under microscopy lang. So ang kailangan dito, i-check rin yung culture nila. Kaya ang minention ko before, important, sobrang important na uh, in tandem yung um, histopath, yung uh, micro, and yung um, culture. Kasi di, ang magde-differentiate sa kanila, lalo na if ito lang makikita natin, yung mga microconidia, ay yung, colon, ay yung um, morphology nila on the agar plate. Remember, rubrum, red. Red, um, reverse pigment. Ernesay, yellow. So, yun. That's how you differentiate them. Now, let's move on to microsperm. Um, there are only two species. So, microsperm canis, they're spindle-shaped. Croissant. So, makikita natin dito yung croissants or yung macroconidia with knob-shaped ends. White colonies siya na may yellowish outer pigment. So, reverse pigment niya, canary yellow. This causes tinea corporis and natural hosts niya are dogs and cats. So, again, spindle-shaped siya. And if we isolate this in a patient, they most probably got it from their pets. Next is microsperum gypsium. Uh, mas blunt yung ends niya. You still have the croissants here, or the macroconidia, pero blunt yung ends niya. And very, very few microconidia compared to microsporum canis. Tapos dito white siya as compared to yellow on the agar of the microsporum canis. So yun, the last but not least, epidermophyton. So, ang um, species of interest natin ay epidermophyton focosum. Dito talaga, as mentioned earlier, walang microconidia. So, you have smooth-walled, club-shaped structures, yung my, macroconidia, na nagka-cluster. So, yun. On agar, they are usually flat and velvety with a tan to olive green tinge. So, ayun. Um, that's it for now. Um, just refer to Ma'am Batak's slides, or the trans, on uh, the trans for the classification of fungi, as well as yung um, uh, fungal outbreak. So, yun, that's that's all, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Sana, may, sana napadali ko kahit pa paano. <laughs> Thank you.
Mm-hmm.